All right, in this continuation of the last video, we're going to go and code the check for match function. And just to recall, one of the things that we were doing in tile tapped was we were setting this flipped table to whatever index number of the tile we flipped over. So we're going to have flipped one and flipped two, and those are going to be the number of the tile that we actually flipped. So those are going to come in handy in a moment. And so the first thing we're going to do in check for match, we're going to see if the length of flipped equals two. If so, then we'll do this stuff here. Otherwise, we skip it. That means that after we transition this first tile down here, it does a check for match, but it runs up here, and the length of flip is only one at this point because we've only flipped over one tile. And so it'll actually skip this, so it'll run over to check for match, say, eh, nothing here for me, and it'll come back. The second time through, flipped will have a length of two, and it'll go ahead and do this stuff in here. So the first thing we're going to do is create a couple local variables, index one and index two. And those are going to equal flipped one and flipped element two. And now we're going to see if the things at all things, remember that table? If all things index one dot name. Okay, so we'll come back to line 93 there in a second. Remember down here, as we created each of these hidden objects, we gave it a name, and the name is going to equal gem blue, heart, ladybug, and so on. And we stuck it in this thing called name. And then we stuck the thing inside of the table called all things. Okay, this is how it all comes back and ties together. So now we just have to look in all things. What's under that tile number? Is the name equal to all things index two dot name? So do they have the same name? If they do have the same name, we just got a match. And we'll do this stuff here. Else, no match, and we'll end up doing that stuff down there. So the first thing that happens is we're going to play the audio sound. So we'll do audio play sound match. And then we're going to do all things index one to front. And that's because when we created these things, we created all the hidden objects first, and then the tiles are on top of them. And I'm going to be moving these two objects that are matches I'm going to be moving them to the upper corner of the screen. And if we don't put them in front, they end up going behind all of the tiles, and it just doesn't look good. So we're going to do a two front here, which we've done before. And copy that and just change the two here. And then we're going to do transition.2. And this is just the kind of thing that you wouldn't have to do this, but it's going to make it look more fun. So we're going to move all things index 1. Time equals 400 milliseconds. We're going to change the X location of it to screen right and the Y to screen top. And at the same time, we're going to change the alpha to zero. And as is my custom, I will copy and paste that and change just this one little thing. All right, let's give this a shot. It's not going to work unless I just happen to pick the two that match because we don't have the thing turned back over yet. Okay. All right, well, before we finish that part, let's go ahead and do the part where it'll flip back over so that we can at least try it. And the first thing we'll do here is we'll do some more audio feedback, but this is no match. And then we're going to do something with the score, but we'll mess with that later. So let's do transition.2. And this, instead of the things, this is the tiles, because we flipped the tiles over, so now we need to put them back. And this is where that delay comes in. Delay equals, and we set that pause delay up at the top. And we're going to switch them back very quickly. We don't want to wait around for that. And on complete, we need to have it reset the number of objects showing. And that's a function that we will create here in just a moment. And I think that is it for that one. And we have two tiles flipped over. So let's do this. But this one, we don't need to call the on complete. We only need the on complete called one time. And so right back up here, local function. Reset num obj showing, and we're just going to do num obj showing equals zero. All right, that'll allow us to flip things over again. And we need to reset flipped. So flipped one equals nil, and flipped element two equals nil. That way we know we are done, and let's try this out. Oh, look at that. We get some feedback. 
Okay, let me see if I can get a, a match here. Where was that girl at? There she is. Okay. And when they match, they both take off up here to the corner, just because I thought it looked kind of cool. And we apparently haven't reset everything we need to. So let's head back over to the code and go ahead and finish this here. So we reset things if we didn't get a match, but we didn't reset things if we did get a match. So up here, let's go ahead and give ourselves a score, add to score, 100 points. And actually, for not getting a score, I kind of like to take some away. And you may not want to do this. This is a design decision. But we also want to check and see if score is greater than 20. Because we don't want to go below zero. That's too mean. And I'm going to add to score minus 20. So every time you miss, you get 20 taken off. And so we need to reset the num obs showing here. That's what we didn't do before. And we're going to do num matches. We're going to keep track of how many matches. And this is a variable that was set up at the top to zero. So number of matches equals number of matches plus one. And so now we have to just check and see if num matches. This is how we know if we won the game or not. If it's equal to, and we could just say if it's equal to 16, but just in case you want to change it from a 4x4 grid to a 6x6 or a 2x2 or something like that, by doing it this way, your code should continue to work. So tiles across times tiles down, divided by 2. If that is true, then audio.play, sound winner, and we can head over to the start over routine. All right, that should do that, and that might be it. We come in here, if we flipped over two of them, we see which number tiles they were, and then we check the name of the object that's underneath that tile number and that tile number. If they match, we play the good sound, we bring them to the front, and we send them to the corner of the screen just to get them out of the way, and it looks good, it's kind of snazzy. We add to the score, then we reset the number of objects showing so we can keep going unless we have the right number of matches, and then we have one. Okay, if we didn't match, we play the wah-wah sound, and we flip the tiles back over, we reset the number of objects showing back to zero, so we can click on some others, and we penalize them. We make them feel bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out. Okay, so far so good. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. Okay, let's keep going here. And I can't click a third one until those two are already gone. Okay. Did I see that one? No. Maybe I did. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So this is it. This is the game. And you can continue on from here. And, oh, did you see I just missed and got points taken away? You can continue on from here and expand on this and make it cooler, but basically you have the foundation of a puzzle game, a memory match game that everybody knows how to play. Okay, so at this point, we get a score. I'm not saving the score, but you can do that. Go back over the lesson on using GG Data. GG Data would be perfect for this, for saving the high score. You could also print a little message here about if they got the high score or not, or if it's a bummer score or something like that. But there's a lot of stuff you could do with this basic shell of the puzzle game. So I hope you enjoy playing around with this and come up with something really cool.